Hello, and welcome to Phys 2104, Energy, Society, and the Environment, and welcome to the first lecture in the course. This first lecture is going to be almost entirely review, but you could be coming into this course from a variety of different routes. And so part of the purpose here is to get us all talking about these ideas in the same terms. The underlying idea in this whole course is energy which is commonly defined as the capacity to do work, but I've never liked that definition very much. It's not really general enough for our purposes, and it's also kind of abstract. So let's review the energy model, which hopefully is familiar to you from previous courses. Energy isn't a thing of its own. It's a quantity that objects have. So for example, if we have some block perhaps moving across a floor, it has kinetic energy by virtue of the fact that it's moving. Energy is conserved, or in other words, it can't be created or destroyed. So we can be confident that if this object is slowing down as it goes across the floor, that kinetic energy, which is decreasing, isn't simply disappearing or being destroyed. It must be converted or transformed into some other form. So energy can transform. In this case, it would have transformed into thermal energy, both in the block and the floor. And note, then, that it hasn't only transformed, it's also transferred between the block and the floor. This is because of friction, which is part of the interaction between the block and the floor. All transfers and transformations of energy result in changes to the physical states of objects, and so we can always couple an energy change with a corresponding physical change. Here the decrease in kinetic energy is corresponding to a reduced speed of the block, and the increase in thermal energy corresponds to an increased temperature of the block and surface. This gives us what I feel is a better definition of energy. Energy is the capacity of an object to cause changes to itself and to other objects. Now, I still feel that something critical is missing here. Every time we talk about energy, we should always have at the forefront of our minds the most important thing, which is that the energy cannot be destroyed or created. It is conserved. Depending on the route you took into this course, this term, physical state, might not be familiar to you. Put simply, it is the set of all measurable quantities describing an object. So for example, velocity is part of the state of an object. Although there's a subtlety here when we're talking about energy, if we think about an object which changes its velocity but doesn't change its speed, so in other words, the magnitude of its velocity doesn't change, it turns out that the energy of the system doesn't change. This is because of symmetry. If you just rotate your perspective, the object doesn't appear to have changed. And so there's no change to the energy despite a change in state. So while velocity is part of the physical state, energy only cares about speed. And this gets us to one type of energy, kinetic energy, which is probably the most familiar type. And we have a relationship between the state change in speed and the energy change in kinetic energy. Similarly, position is part of the physical state of an object, but as with velocity, not all changes of position correspond to changes in energy. Think about something moving along through the vacuum of space. It'll move at constant velocity, and hopefully you can see that despite the position changing, there are no changes of energy going on here. Well, to see why, think of taking a perspective moving along with the object. Then from your perspective, nothing changes. And so again, symmetry is telling us that there's no change to the energy despite a change in state. But commonly, position does matter. For an object on the end of a spring, its speed is changing, and so kinetic energy must be converting back and forth with some other form of energy, and that form of energy must depend on the relative position between the ends of the spring, or in this picture, the relative position of the ball with respect to the wall. Or similarly, if you drop a ball, 
it speeds up as it goes down, and so there must be some exchange between the kinetic energy and a form of energy that depends on the relative position of the ball relative to the floor. So position is part of physical state, but energy seems to only care about relative positions between interacting objects. In the one case, we then identify that there's something we call spring potential energy, which has to do with the length of the spring. And in the other case, we identify that there's something we call gravitational potential energy, which turns out to depend on the height of the ball. So now we can just summarize a bunch of types of changes of physical state, and this is by no means a complete list. Kinetic energy is related to speed of objects. Gravitational potential energy is related to heights of objects. Spring potential energy is related to shapes of springs, or the relative position of spring ends. Thermal energy is related to temperature. Chemical energy is related to chemical composition, and so on and so on. So let's check your understanding. Think about a box which starts stationary and begins to slide down a slope, and after going some distance, it's sped up somewhat. And friction is not negligible. So what transformation or transformations of energy are going on in this process?